My name is Nita Elliott and I'm here uh, at the Power and Guthrie Centre talking That's to cool. Olivia Dwyer about her upcoming show Homebird at the Kevin Cavanagh Gallery. Olivia, do you want to tell us a little bit about the show? Well, thanks for talking to me, first of all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's in January, it's opening on January 11th, um, 2024. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of, kind of been agreed upon from probably February of this year, so I've been working towards it bones of a year so I've really um, honed in on the self because I work from home but um, yeah so it's just yeah so you're extracting the pieces from where they are not only made but where they're about essentially yeah because uh, I've been working at home um, like the studio is at home so it's kind of inevitable that when you see the show, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, it's kind of inevitable that it would go to the self, and I found that was the right path, sort of, when I when you kind of listen to, to where the work wants to go. Um, and that the work is very much bound up in that title, Homebird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us where that where that came from for you? Yeah, um, it was just uh, like a... came about really instantaneously, like um, a phone call with a friend, and... Um, I was their usher on a pure home bird <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh my God, that's the title of the show when I got off the phone. And um, yeah, and I like, there's there's nice little connotations to it, you know, obviously. But when you look up the, Google it, it's um, someone who prefers their own home or their own company to, to, to the outside world or not all the time, but you know. <laughs> uh, I love home is where life is, happens for me, you know. Um, and is that... Irish colloquialism of bird being a female or a woman. Yeah. Um, and then your work is very much from the female perspective. Yeah, it is. It is because um, I am female. But <laughs> first of all, yeah, I do like yeah, mm -hmm. purposely. Um, yeah, but I was I was even telling my son, I said it to my son, and he hadn't heard the phrase before. So I like that aspect. Um, of it, like the the phrase is dying out, like becoming mm -hmm. defunct. You know. Um, Gen Z haven't yeah, but so I like that because it kind of tied tied in certain aspects of the show, like hinting on nostalgia mm -hmm. and um, being a child of the eighties, like and like you'll see like from from the sh the show that there's lots of furniture and uh, interiors obviously, but that are very much imprinted in my brain from like a lot of artists are you know for like memory is leaves a big impression um it feels yeah because you were, you were saying to me yesterday that a lot of the imagery that you were bringing forth was from memory and i was thinking about that afterwards and i was wondering like is that in some way you know bringing forward past memories to try and resolve them in some way and release them or is that like kind of bringing yourself into the present bringing all the parts of who you are together yeah I don't think you fully realize that's that's the, I think that's the joy in making that you you shouldn't really know every aspect of what you're doing you know but mm. but I do find memory has changed for me over the course of producing this show mm -hmm. um like before I would have like purposely made a painting um of a memory uh, from childhood you know um but I found memory came into play when I was doing something else and I was kind of like it's mm -hmm. like surprised me like it's kind of floated to the surface in yeah in like in the make within the making yeah, yeah. Uh, especially in excuse me especially in um the the bathroom the bath scene mm -hmm. which is not titled <laughs> um yeah just my, uh the memories of my childhood bathroom i just i don't know i said i suppose a lot of artists are like that that you i really had or a visual mind of course mm -hmm. but you just really see stuff from your childhood um not it's not the core aspect of the work but mm -hmm. but yeah i was kind of transported back to those the white walls of my bathroom even though i wasn't purposely going there so i like that 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 change memory change for me in that way yeah so and some of your other influences you were talking about like film and writing like you reference olivia lang's funny weather in one of the titles as well yeah um yeah titles titles are interesting like you like I think a lot of artists they kind of know 
that a title can close down a work and it can be two or uh, some some people don't even use titles they do one two three so the viewer will be mm. totally left but I, I like kind of I try to do loose sort of ones that come to um, intu- not intuitively but come you know mm-hmm. come to you out of the blue um, I think that's a really but that important one for the series um, uh, I am uh, I am the author of my days yeah yeah that well that that's from yeah. funny weather but it's not directly from I, well I suppose Olivia Lang said it but she was in reference to Georgia O'Keeffe um, mm. which you know was a a very much a strong single woman. <laughs> um, mm. Oh, it was just kind of in context that uh, like she was like author of my days. It was related mm. to someone else who was unhappily in a relationship, <laughs> and she was like, "I'm author of my days." So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that just shouts out at me and goes, and the painting it that author of my days is quite a it's quite a happy. It is gestural, like done. You know. Um, happy feeling painting which a lot of them are a lot of the work is quite melancholic really or mm-hmm. so in um, all through my days the um figure is seen from the legs down in um in the reverse on the bed with their um feet crossed among the pillows yeah. so it's quite for me that's it's that nearly slightly rebellious sense of i'll do what my do whatever i want my yeah. life is my own. Yeah. I don't have to abide by yeah. the norm. Yeah. Essentially. And there's yeah. a there, there's that feeling throughout the work alongside, as you say, a melancholy. Mm. Um, to can very much feel the push and pull. And I think that's something that is um in in, in some ways personal to you to yourself. Oh absolutely. Yeah. I mean it's a very very personal show. Yeah. But that's I think that's <laughs> excuse me but I think that's why I, d- I don't purposely or I don't fully put myself in the work yeah um, and I think that was kind of really kind of a subconscious decision as well you know you're not fully but yeah um, and I suppose there's that thing of like yes you, what does it mean to put your yourself in your work when it is personal but it's also not personal like I think that's you're you're, yeah. you're using yourself as the subject, yeah, and it is about you, but it's also about something that's bigger than you. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's where you, where you have the space and time over the year to do that. Um, you find you put, like as someone told me I'm an intuitive learner, and I'm like, geez, I didn't realize you just pull stuff that yeah. that speaks to you, don't they? Um, but throughout the year, yeah, and then it was kind of one interview with another artist, and it's like. When they stood, when they paint themselves mm-hmm. or go to the self, it's not it's not a vanity project. It's it's talk it's talk is and it wasn't you know because I'm not in it really. <laughs> but, yeah. but I did do yeah I anyway, digress. But it's not it's not about vanity or um, to navel gazing really. It's mm-hmm. touching on themes of I think much more important or I- important issues because mm-hmm. um, yeah on loneliness which is a topic that's um i suppose not discussed or mm. and i and again reading more on it and uh, olivia lang the lonely city mm-hmm. like it's a really hard book to read but it's really important mm-hmm. to it to, to know that yeah uh, but then as actually coming whole mm. like the as you were saying in the kind of yesterday you were talking you were saying the jewel aspects of I'm making sense. It's very much there because, like, when I, I look at the work, I think about it as aloneness, and aloneness, do, you know, people are very quick to say aloneness is like isolation and loneliness, and, and it can absolutely yeah. um, be that or encompass that. And then there is those aspects to your work, but there's also this other aspect which is, you know, becoming more yourself, allowing that your absolutely, time is yeah. your own, that yeah. your body is your own, yeah. that your thoughts are your own, and there's that great kind of freedom in that that you see so you can see both I think in um uh in particular um the piece um in the morning uh I think that's a really key one for me because it's at first you see that melancholy the uh, figure yeah. lying down in the bed their mm. their hand on their face and it does look like that yeah. sadness of people have left for the day yeah. and you're on your own but yeah. then you look again and there's the dressing gown um the tie and it's like kind of floating away yeah. and it's like, what's going to happen now like there's that sense of freedom so 
So that both are touched on in, in, in a lot of the images. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I wanted to, um, in the show. Not like totally th- thought about it, but mm-hmm. that it's not just um, loneliness. Like it was, it's kind of a, it was kind of a journey actually, because I did, did like really concentrate on. So you, you spent a lot of time alone. So, and when you became the subject, you know, in ho- in the house where you work, <laughs> it's like. And I love beds. I just started to get obsessed with beds. Like the, <laughs> the last show was when they were creeping in, but I said they were just taking over in this show. But um, and the, the the furniture in your pieces is uh, as prominent as the figure, or as important as the figure yeah. on the plane. Yeah. Like it's yeah. they become figures in in their own right or characters yeah. in their own right. I think is yeah. what you've said. But that's I don't think it's very original, but um, I I thought it was original to me, but. <laughs> that furniture are characters in themselves mm. and when you um well, it, well you wrote about it mm. more eloquently than i but <laughs> um yeah um i suppose yeah you you saw that spending time in the house that you kind of came became not part of the furniture but sort yeah. of or that the furniture becomes more like um companions in your life that yeah uh, the way i was i was phrasing it to myself and i was thinking about things become more thingy yeah (laughs) well it's 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 the thing i just thought about there is is observation really Mm. because i think as an artist and this is from reading and listening that you observe like Mm. i look at my cat i'm always constantly like my cat Mm. or the you see your couch the dresser across Mm. that's in the couple of the paintings you you look at that every day and it, it starts to really get into your subconscious or mm-hmm. um but yeah i think observation is uh, artists observe mm-hmm. not all but artists you know you do yeah. you observe and you and you know. when we're looking as as observers of the paintings and looking at the figure which is you in the pictures yeah. as you say we're only ever getting to see you in part like mm-hmm. a leg or from behind um, and I really like that aspect of it because it's, um, I think you, you talk a lot about the female gaze, we're all well aware of the male gaze, mm. but for me, in these images, there's a solitary gaze. It's like, I'm just for myself and yeah. I'm turning my back yeah. on that world where I'm being observed, I'm mm. being judged, I'm being, yeah. I have to be a certain way for those gazes. And this is just me looking at me, Yeah. for me. I, I love yeah. that because that really suits the work but mm. I, I somebody sent me an, um, an essay from the 1970s I can't think now who the writer mm. was but it was a really good essay on the female gaze but mm. again the phrase pops out private gaze yes and I thought that kind of ex- explains it really in a nutshell so yeah. I mean obviously they're very intimate mm-hmm. I've never shied away from personal work you know mm. um, I think it's important to be but honest and um, authentic and it makes you like even devoting that time has made me <laughs> uh, strong, stronger as a person because the two like didn't separate mm-hmm. um, yeah, so what did you like spending that time by yourself and engaging with yourself on that level what yeah. what, what 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 happened for you like, it's what? just I think it made me kind of more not, not powerful stupid but uh, mm-hmm like really engaging with the work and going on walks and really letting it yeah uh, it's it's um it's having a, it's having a yeah it's made me more balanced as a person it's kind of like it's like you're coming out the other end of it it's yeah like the, that extracting yourself yeah. from the world allow yeah. you to be more yourself yeah so you're just working with yourself reflected yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but yeah yeah it is important to fully be able to sit with yourself mm. and not be totally distracted you know i mean still life going on around me but i think yeah i think and then um, someone asked me at dinner last night one of the, one of the writers mm. here <laughs> i had another interview <laughs> but, uh, uh, i forgot what i don't know what they asked you uh, well i'll ask you you were, yeah. t- you were t- in the studio the other day you were saying about your interest in women's health yeah, I mean, and that certainly it seems connected to mental health at least mm. in that needing time to get away and, and be yourself. Yeah. Um, and what was you? What were you? Those aspects of women's health that you were interested in in the work. Um. Oh well, obviously it's 
personal again, but um, of, of a certain age going through um, the menopause. Um, excuse me. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I touched on certain aspects. Um, like, bef- like it's, it's a very funny, <laughs> you can get, get too personal, but it's, it's universal as well. Absolutely. You know? um, and I'll, that, I'll make like that. I got my son to put a sheet over me yeah. and take a photograph, and I very loosely referenced the photograph. But uh, all the stuff ties into it: memory, nostalgia. But yeah, just just at that time, feel like wanting to disappear, mm-hmm. not not feeling invisible. You know, you hear mm-hmm. pe- women feeling invisible when they get to a certain age. But um, yeah. That part of it. Such an action to get yours on to put a sheet over you. Oh, it's they like, do all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going, oh, God's sake, man. Yeah. Take a photograph of me shaving my legs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, and that, I found that really powerful. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, the work is quite cathartic. That's what the writer would ask me. Is it cathartic? Mm-hmm. And I said, it is and it isn't. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it is cathartic in, in places to, yeah, to... To actually not be political or any like, but to actually but maybe be political because yeah. I think talking about things like the menopause, yeah. like we've been so socialized to, to not talk about certain things as women, and that's certainly one of them. Yeah. That's like no, that's a, a private thing and a private mm. medical thing. Well, or, it's changing though. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank God. But to it is kind of a political thing to go. Actually, no, I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to yeah. paint it and I'm going yeah. to put it in a gallery. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it that pe- uh, that painting I think um, has has presence. I did one before that, and it was all kind of tribal <laughs> marks and stuff. It was really scary. It reminded me of um, the guy in the Terminator or something <laughs> like. Or that anyway. Can I? So I, I, I scrapped it, but mm-hmm. and made it kind of much softer and. But it was something you needed to yeah, get. And I sent it to my brother, which I never said. He goes, "That is scary." <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I kind of yeah, but I I, li- I love see it's I love open the narrative mm-hmm. is open, mm-hmm. you know, and I I definitely get that from from other artists who take bits of advice, you know, like do you know the Danish artist Tal R, uh, um, yeah, he was like keep the mystery, like mm-hmm. pose pose questions rather than give all the yeah. So I've kind You're of leaving cha- enough space for people to bring themselves into it. Yeah, so it's like it. While this is personal, it's it's also beyond me because it's it's more experience, more people's experience than my own. Yeah, and and painting is beyond you as well. At times, you know, you can't, you don't know what he says. You don't know what you're, you know. I can't tell you the answers he says in his painting. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm talking about answers like you you um you reference uh, Emily Dickinson's "Tell the Truth but Tell It Slant." Yeah, so that's another one that just went bull bolt, but um, yeah. And so is it? Is this you telling your truth? I suppose to a point. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. It's definitely out there. For some people, it's like Jesus. It's really honest and yeah. personal, but um, it's not. It's not fully me at the same time. Mm. But telling a slant, I love that because that's how artists look at the world. That's not my original thought, <laughs> you know. But that's. Yeah. Like that's when you like regurgitate or when you like put it onto something else, it's it's slanted like it's yeah. or it's how, and you, how you see the world, you know. You reflect yeah. that in your compositions because a lot of them are yeah. like off kilter mm. or even you know whether that's how the you're looking at the the the, the scene or yeah how the um the figures are in yeah. it. Yeah, that that always comes not um mm. really naturally without thinking. So that's that off kilter thing is and telling a slant is mm. kind of is interesting. And now I'm kind of like when you're more aware of it, you kind of purposely maybe mm-hmm. uh, take advantage of that. And you also but do something similar in your um, uh, application of paint because you were talking about like in some parts the you let the paint kind of to buckle or wrinkle to reflect mm. age. Oh um, yeah, yeah, you know that there's there's aspects of that that yeah. that's what you're saying as well of how you use the paint. Yeah, um, that's kind of playing with the surface quality mm. of the paint, but then because it's limbs, mm. um, yeah, just a little bit of little bit of hint that might give more of an narrative. You know, mm. it's like you're not like you just kind of just give a, a bit of a hint, and someone go, oh yeah, you know, 
completely skin or yeah, mm. and that adds to the, the story of it, you know. Um, but I, I just got obsessed with limbs and just you can see that it's Philip Gustin influenced obviously mm. with limbs and stuff, but in in my way, but yeah, extended and yeah. long. Like, I, I think when it said in the text was that there's this near adolescence to it because they're like long that, yeah. skin, skinny yeah. legs of like children or well, that's, that's teenagers that's... like that when they're going through growth spurts and that reminded me of that thing of reclaiming your freedom then you're yeah. kind of going back to that when your your kids are gone or you know whoever's in your life no longer needs you as a nurturer then it's like you get this like spurt of I've, yeah i'm totally after getting what i do what i was doing yeah it was just really i yeah when you said as adolescence in the text but now I just realised I'm probably painting my, my children as well. Yeah. That could be the, the legs and limbs. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, so... You see, that's the joy of it. Isn't it? Yeah. You, don't, you don't know all their influences, even other people, not other artists. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But they have that's, that that's, aspect that's of gas. them. That's yeah. Because my son has really long legs. So. <laughs> and in that, in the shapeshifter one, mm-hmm. yeah, that could be him. And the one <laughs> where you are literally like... Jumping off the ground or floating. Yeah. Um. What 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 is that? Oh, that is legs. <laughs> it's actually called legs. I think that. Was oh no, legs. that's figure ground and something oh, else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But there's yes. Yeah. And there's be... actually two where you are. F- one where you're floating above the bed. Um. Dream yeah. catch me. Yeah. And then there's the one with the yeah. with the legs with the dresser where you're. Yeah. yeah. Those that actually those were made. That's one with the dresser and the the one with the leg mm-hmm. out of the bed the smaller mm-hmm. one um, bedhead mm-hmm. were made here in April of this year which yeah. where we originally met yeah <laughs> <laughs> back, again, back yeah. again to finish off yeah. the series um, um, yeah so I think is there anything else you'd like to tell us about or if we're going to insert some imagery here so yeah. people watching online um, will see it that haven't been to the show any more questions <laughs> <laughs> any questions for the audience <laughs> um, yeah no yeah. I think yeah uh, I, thanks for doing it and mm-hmm. um, I, I'm really chuffed that we get to do it here in the in Tyrone Guthrie yeah that, um, get yeah. To, to see the work about home outside the home um, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. On board, let 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 free. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, yeah. Olivia. Thank you. Um, thanks for talking yeah. to me about your work this morning. Yeah. Thank you.